the Greater Yellowstone Area, elk and bison need your help. Please join in petitioning the National Park Service's Intermountain Region, Regional Director Sue Massica, to formally request the National Academy of Sciences conduct a review of wildlife brucellosis in the Greater Yellowstone Area. The issues of brucellosis in the GYA states of Montana, Wyoming, and Idaho has severe implications for our livestock industries as well as our treasured public wildlife resources. Recognizing that our federal and GYA state agencies share a need for a responsible science to base their policies on, this petition was conceived. The National Academy of Sciences Charter commits the Academy to provide scientific advice to the government whenever called upon by any government department to ensure that science, not politics and special interest, drive the public discussion and foundation of brucellosis disease management policy in the GYA wildlife, we are in need of the National Academy of Sciences to conduct a thorough scientific review of brucellosis disease management concerning wildlife, predominantly elk and bison, in the greater Yellowstone area. Over 100 years ago, the livestock disease brucellosis entered the West with the settlers and their herds. As a result, wild elk and bison became infected with the bacteria Brucella abortus, which may cause an animal to abort after initial exposure. The majority of subsequent pregnancies are not affected. This disease has become naturalized in these greater Yellowstone area wildlife where natural and acquired immunities continue to evolve with minimal mortality threat to the elk and bison populations. Within the livestock industry, USDA Animal and Plant and Health Inspection Services, also known as APHIS, embarked on an eradication program to eliminate the disease from livestock, which has largely been successful. Because cattle is a commercial product, the industry was not willing to accept possible loss due to an abortion. In order to achieve this brucellosis eradication, it required the test and slaughter of any animal found to possess antibody markers in their blood. If exposed to brucellosis, an animal's blood can test positive for brucellosis antibodies representing immunity, yet not be infected or infectious. Currently, there is no test differentiating between immunity and infection or infectious without first killing the animal. USDA APHIS seeks to impose their livestock policies of brucellosis eradication upon our wildlife populations through various means. Eradication of brucellosis within the wildlife populations involves capturing all infected wildlife, every elk, bison, deer, and moose, testing them, slaughtering all animals that simply tested positive for antibodies to exposure, which can also represent natural and acquired immunities, not strictly infection or infectious. This eradication within our wildlife could not be achieved in one year. It would require decades of slaughter and vigilance, billions of taxpayer dollars, and untold manpower hours and resources with no guarantee of success. Historically, a number of policies involving brucellosis management have not been rooted in responsible science, rather assumptions or politics. For years, APHIS has promoted an agenda of brucellosis eradication from the greater Yellowstone area, a position which is not socially, humanly, economically, and scientifically supported. As a result, by their own statements, millions of federal taxpayer dollars, other sources cite billions, have been spent targeting Yellowstone National Park bison on an assumption that the wild bison were the major vectors of brucellosis transmission, which actually resides with the elk populations. Now that the special interest groups and agencies responding to the APHIS brucellosis eradication and wildlife agenda are aware that it is the elk genotype, which is a small transmission threat to cattle, that machinery is now turning its sights to the elk populations. Science, not politics, needs to address the following questions. What is the actual zoonotic transmission risk of Brucella abortus to humans from brucellosis-exposed wildlife, accounting for the fact that many involved with the livestock and wildlife vaccines are the major source of accidental Brucella abortus infections in humans? What is the actual transmission risk to livestock 
from brucellosis exposed wild bison or wild elk in the greater Yellowstone area. What is the environmental impact of the APHIS agenda of eradication of brucellosis in the wildlife on the GYA states to the habitat as well as the genetics of the bison and elk populations? Additionally, are the goals and practices of agriculture livestock management compatible with the goals and evolving practices of the conservation sciences that protect and promote ecological integrity of the GYA states for future generations? Finally, what are the economics of the livestock management model for brucellosis eradication within the wildlife populations of the GYA states? Current science produced today reports that the transmission risk from wild Yellowstone National Park bison to cattle is 0.0 to 0.3 percent, the 0.3 percent being an academic safety net. No documented case of wild bison to cattle transmission has ever naturally occurred. The genetics of Brucella abortus in wild bison differs from that of elk and cattle, which is almost identical, affecting species transmission. Of the 99.7% to 100% of the risk that elk pose to cattle, that probability is low due to elk dams segregating themselves during birthing and meticulously cleaning the birth site. Additionally, predators and scavengers remove abortions from the landscape, contributing to decreased opportunities for possible transmission to cattle. Science, not politics, should be managing our wildlife so I ask you to please petition the National Park Service's Intermountain Region, Regional Director Sue Massica, to formally request the National Academy of Sciences conduct a review of wildlife brucellosis in the greater Yellowstone area. The American public, citizens of the United States, are owed nothing less in the stewardship, policies, and management of our public trust resources on behalf of this generation and future generations than the knowledge and ethical principles of peer-reviewed science. Thank you.